Sa kanya lahat. Welcome to Pinoy Crossover, the basketball show for the Filipino community. My name's PJ. Joining me are my co-hosts, Marky Mark. Very injured, very still alive. Basketball, volleyball, <laughs> let's not talk about it. And we got JR right here. What's going on, guys? Director, producer of the freshly uploaded... What's it called? Phil can, Phil yeah. can come up. A uh, new documentary. We'll talk about it at the end of the show, YouTube. but let's get, let's get right into it. Yeah, so this whole episode, this whole <laughs> episode we're just going to talk about what just went on in the playoffs from the Raptors. Let's just say losing. We're not going to say nah, there's no one this here, so we beat. can't really do they anything. Got. But we're just going to talk about the playoff results. So, Marky Mark, I know you're injured, but... I think it. it'd be no, a good segue started. to uh, yeah. to the first. Because it did hurt. It yeah. did hurt what happened just the past <laughs> weekend. Uh, let's go to the Raps and the Cavs series. You mm-hmm. guys, um, aside from the results, what did you guys see? What some of your thoughts, analysis, insights throughout the whole series? Man, you can't doubt LeBron James again. <laughs> yeah. uh, once you, you sometimes I like I, I I can admit to myself that you know I doubted LeBron from the since the trade deadline. From who are these players? Does he really have that momentum to bring his team to the next level? Bring him to the conference finals and what they're at right now? But you know LeBron James is like Thanos, snap, oh, playoff, Thanos playoff. Here. Playoff LeBron and his whole so team. So basically, he snaps and the, the, the team just disappears. Exactly. In the whole series, and, and, the, and playoff LeBron and his yeah. influence on himself having a great performance throughout the whole playoffs, including the game seven against Indiana and the sweep with the Raptors. He's he influenced everyone else because, in, in uh, when they played at Indiana, they were shooting about uh, probably less than thirty percent on from the three point line. Now against the Raptors during their sweep, they increased their a three-point shot into like 40% shooting and he influenced Cal, uh, Kevin Love, J.R. Smith got a shot back. Uh, Kyle Corbett has been producing um, the point guard. Uh, Hill Hill has been producing as well. So it's it's tough to see the, Rap- the, the Raptors, you know, they, they weren't able to um, compete with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm-hmm. It's very sad to see, but, you know, I thought the Raptors, it was this, this year was their time, you know, uh, a lot of teams were injured and Cleveland was just in their way. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, and LeBron. LeBron is LeBron, man. LeBron play is play the, off LeBron. He LeBron is the ba. What? The ba. He's what? Nah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, that's, no, that's another argument. Okay, that's another listen, debate we get. Can... Lowry in his press conference said this, yeah. this year was wasted. Yeah. Do you think that's the case? I, th- I feel that they played really well the whole mm. season. Like it was their franchise year. And they did let... If you lose two games at home, then it's kind of lost right there. Your momentum's down. Yeah. And they did play good games. The first, the first two games, they did have it from, you know, I was watching the first game one, like, at mm-hmm. LA Fitness, and they, were, <laughs> and they were winning the whole game until it came down to crunch time where they needed people to perform. Jonas played a great game that first game, mm-hmm. but they could, and they needed one win at least at home. And True. when you're in that hole, then it's, like, it's hard to come back. But uh-huh. let's go back to Lowry saying it's a wasted year. What did you think? Or... What did you think about the Raptors yeah. and coming this far? I, I, I don't think it's a, waste, uh, it's a waste of a year for them. I think it was more of a uh, missed opportunity in the yeah. series. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't more... Uh, they played well against Washington. Uh, they, they, got, they got them in six, uh, six games. And, and so I felt like they had the best for, uh, franchise record in terms of wins for the season. So I didn't think it was a waste of a season, but it was a wasted opportunity for them to really take advantage of a series that they could have really won because... Uh, so you really believe that they could have won against it, Cleveland? Yeah, it was more of an opportunity for them to 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 show really if they've a overcome. Greater chance now. They yeah. overcome the the LeBron James LeBron uh, effect. The, yeah, in in a sense yeah. of uh, they had the better squad, they had the deeper, uh, and I think they had a more talented squad than LeBron that did. But it's just that I think LeBron. It took. It, I, I would say <laughs> the LeBron, is, LeBron. Is, is a combine is a combine of like at least three or four of their players. <laughs> there were seven inches. players on the court. <laughs> That's why it's, LeBron uh, added two extra. And the thing is that if you just, if you guys notice the whole matchup, uh, in terms of what they try to do to slow down LeBron or to kind of counteract the team's uh, offense, they did exactly the same thing as as uh, as Indiana Pacers. The, the only difference is that. The, the role players actually started stepping up for the uh, mm-hmm. the Cavs. They actually started hitting their shots, mm-hmm. which is something that uh, that they didn't do against the Indiana Pacers team. And I felt like the key difference was the Indiana Pacers team weren't scared of LeBron. Not scared, but they weren't intimidated by LeBron's greatness or presence and, and impact on the court because Oladipo knew that nobody could stand uh, in front of him 
yeah. any one of the uh, the calves. So he kept attacking them. He wasn't scared, mm -hmm. uh, and, and he was making plays for himself and for everybody else. Lance Stevenson wasn't scared of LeBron. Uh, they had players like Darren Carlson stepping up. Bojan was guarding LeBron. And Bojan was never known to be a good defender. And they had OG, who was a better defender than LeBron. And I think LeBron took that as more of a challenge. Whereas, uh, I think Rap, yeah, yeah, he was frustrated. But the thing is that I think him being guarded by like a really good defender kind of made him step up his game more. And uh, it wasn't good for the Raptors. <laughs> when you challenge so, greatness, he I rises. Think, yeah, it's just that uh, in this series, LeBron did exactly what he did when he was playing against the Pacers. It's just that his role players actually started stepping on. Kevin Love finally kind of appeared. And he had also a mountain monster game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. monster games as uh, well. Kevin Love finally played exactly how they needed him to be. To win, you know, to win the series and to win the games mm -hmm. that they needed to. And mm -hmm. sometimes it was like it's part of the inside the head psychology. Like there were mm -hmm. there were missing plays, missing defensive matchups. There was a lot of in that game four specifically. There was a lot of backcourt cuts that Cal Corr was catching, J.R. Smith was catching, and then the Raptors weren't able to you know communicate on the floor and mm -hmm. they weren't getting the defensive matchups. Um, and you know, respect to OG. OG did his best to try to defend his. As, uh, he's a future star. He, um, he's a, a star. Do his best for them. defending LeBron James in Game Three, you know. But yeah. LeBron James got a game-winning shot, which was was really good. Quickly so. before we go into our next segment, uh, what should the Raptors do in this off-season? Because it, it was an amazing franchise mm -hmm. year, but it, it just fell short in the playoffs. What should they do, or what should they focus on? Depends on what LeBron does. <laughs> if he it's stays, all on if LeBron. he leaves and goes to the West, I would say keep the team, yeah. uh, sign Van Fleet back, and maybe add another piece in their uh, in their starting lineup. Because uh, uh, JV is a great player, but I think he's more of a bench come off the bench kind of player. Mm. Spark. Uh, if LeBron stays in the East, I'd say <laughs> we got to find another way. <laughs> we got to find another way to build a team. Because uh, LeBron isn't going anywhere. If he stays in the East, he's mm. not. He's only he's only gonna go straight up. Finals, playoffs, deep into the playoff run. Yeah. People may say they want to blow up the team, but I don't think you want to blow up this process. It's kind of technically one year into this culture change process with the first time the bench mob have been playing together and the first time in the playoffs. And it's just it's it, their whole time, the first time playing together basically into the playoffs. So it's still a process of, you know, this whole um, your outlook for the Toronto Raptors. Uh, one thing that stands out to me is that there's a lot of contracts that, you know, big contracts, Sergi Baca, Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, those are just, it's it's very hard to trade Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, just because no one really wants to pay that amount of money to an older player. And one thing that stands out is Norman Powell, he's getting paid a lot and he hasn't been playing. So hopefully one day, one either they either move him, get another player, like Mark said, uh, move it for a better player, get another score off the bench, or actually just use Norman Powell, get, he's, he hasn't been used at all, basically. He's big game He didn't have nothing. a good season. I, I understand why. <laughs> go, <laughs> go <down laughs> just play his goodbye. Oh, man. When we come back, we're going to talk more about playoffs and the series that occurred. Stay tuned.